Ergun Kirlokavali, who is in Irvine, California. He's a board member of the Turkish Philanthropy Funds. Uh, really great to have you on the program with us. I want to get your reaction as our North America correspondent, John Brain, just referenced there. It doesn't seem like there were a lot of tangible results out of this meeting. Certainly, a lot of the differences and the uh, sort of disagreements that the two countries have been grappling with were brought to the table. Uh, perspectives were explained. But I, I guess, what is your reaction to sort of what the Turkish president has been able to achieve with this visit to the White House? I think a lot. Well, first things first, in conflict resolution, rule number one is dialogue. That was established. Because up to now, what we heard and what we saw in the big media and in the U.S. Congress was basically bullying and badmouthing. They don't even know their facts. For example, they would call uh, the, 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 the whole issue as Turks fighting Turks. There's no such thing. Turks are not fighting Turks. Turks are fighting a terrorist organization. They even fail to make a difference between the Kurds at large and a terrorist organization. That's how primitive their approach was. So I was hoping that this uh, meeting would take place so that uh, the channels of communication could be open. And I think we have achieved that today. It's, it's interesting that you mentioned that, and I think that that was a very important point. We hear Western media often refer to the YPG terror group as the Kurds, the Kurds. I think President Trump, or President Erdogan, rather, has been able to clarify that on a number of fronts, not just with the Republican leaders that he met with at the White House, but also in that press conference when he was responding to the, uh, the tough letter that President Trump had sent him. Um, I want to know what you think is the next step in the relationship between the U.S. and Turkey. Where does this NATO alliance go from here, and how do you see cooperation in the future between these two countries? Well, excellent questions. Uh, let me start with the last one first. I think NATO, uh, in the case of northern Syria, uh, really uh, failed uh, in a big way because, according to NATO uh, premise, if an attack occurs on one of the members, all of the members will, will come to the rescue. Well, that didn't happen. Uh, Turkey was under attack by a terrorist organization. In fact, there were more than 800 attacks involving mortar lobs, mortars lob, uh, missiles fired, uh, causing 20 deaths and more than several hundred the wounded, uh, uh, and billions of dollars of, of property damage. And yet none of them took place you couldn't see anything about these things in the big media in the West. And NATO did nothing to come to the rescue. So there's a big question there that really NATO has to sit down and analyze what went wrong. It, this is a very serious, serious issue. NATO has to come to its senses and say, hey, do I want to continue uh, the, this operation, this, this whole framework? Or uh, do I want to disband, disband the whole thing? Because I think if a, a, a major, major a premise on which NATO is built is violated, then uh, what's the next step? So I think on that part, NATO has to do some soul searching. Now, on the, uh, uh, on the um, uh, uh, Turkish side, uh, we have to realize that uh, Turkey has been bearing the brunt of uh, the refugee crisis. There are more than 4 million Syrian refugees. Now, to, to put that into perspective for uh, the Uni United States viewers, Turkey is a bit larger than Texas and Arizona. And uh, it, 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 Turkey's population is 80 million. Now, if you do the math, uh, this would be equivalent to having about uh, 10, 12, 13 million refugees in Texas and Arizona alone. Think about that. And that was how Turkey was left, uh, with, with no help, holding the bag, and the European countries basically building up walls, uh, putting up barbed wires, kicking out refugees. And I mean, I have to say this, but friends, that all mighty friends, 
would just take like 10 or 15 or 100 whatever uh, refugees and they would check their teeth as if they're buying horses. If the teeth were great, then they would take them in. Otherwise, you wouldn't get in. This is ridiculous and this is really shameful. I, have, I think that the West has to really uh, do some soul searching here. What have I done wrong? Because it's easy to Ergun, create trouble. really appreciate you putting that into context. I, ha I have another question for you. Um, one of the right. things that Erdogan had touched on, President Erdogan touched on in that press conference, was he once again reiterated Turkey's demand to extradite, extradite Fethullah Gulen. That is the man who Turkey blames for that failed coup attempt. We have not seen progress on that with the Obama administration. We have not seen progress on that with the Trump administration. Uh, in fact, here domestically in the United States, there are lawmakers who have accused Trump's personal uh, lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, of being a lobbyist on behalf of the Turkish government and pushing for that. Uh, what is sort of the, the future of that demand, uh, given the fact that Turkey has repeatedly said that they've given the United States all of the documents to hand over Gulen? Yes, we've been following that very closely also. Turkey ha has handed over more than 90 files on Gulen. I mean, it's like, uh, we have a saying here, if it walks like a dog, uh, uh, a dog and then quacks like a dog, it's a dog. Now, th this guy is clearly uh, the, the mastermind behind the coup that caused uh, 250 deaths in Turkey and, and more than uh, 2,000 wounded. Uh, billions of dollars in, in, in damage. And, and uh, so uh, United States has really no leg to stand on when they say that, the, uh, that Turkey has not made its case. Turkey has made its case plenty. But I think, my personal view, the reason the United States cannot turn over uh, a tether to Turkey is because then the whole entire world will find out that CIA and the United States was behind the coup. That is clear to me now, because they are so scared to even touch that issue. That makes me believe that, that they have some dirty linens to hide. That's why they cannot turn Petro over to Turkey. End the story there. All right, Ergun Kilikovali uh, coming to us from Irvine, California, who is a member of the Turkish Philanthropy Funds. We really appreciate your analysis and being with My us pleasure. on the program. If